He's a well-known South African rugby player. He played for Western Province and the Stormers for more than 120 games. Played for the Springboks for 39 tests, um, also overseas. And it really is a privilege today to welcome you, Kornay Krieger. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. My first real break, I think, came uh, under 30. Um, I was still under 12, but I was picked for the under 13 Craven Week. And I think the teacher at the time felt that I was really naughty and that he needed to give me some responsibility. And maybe a stroke of genius, maybe a bit of luck, but, you know, he made me captain of the Western Province under 13 team and I never stopped captaining teams. You know, after that, I was captain all the way through, you know. So it's a great lesson in, in that sense, right from an early age, that the naughty guy can often be the good leader. I was never afraid because if you if you that distance away from your parents, you can never um, go and cry on mommy's shoulder or on mm. daddy's shoulder. You have mm. to sort it out yourself, mm. you know. Mm. Good and bad, because the, some good things came from that, and and later in your life, bad things come from that. Because when you have to fight for yourself, you know, often um, violence is the first uh, first option, and then negotiate afterwards if you see yeah. you're not going to win, you know. So, I. I made lots of mistakes along the way because of that, but also, you know, some really good stuff came out as well. A lot of people in Paul had it kept, kept an eye out for me, you know, because I was this kid without parents. Basically, they were in Zambia. Every now and then, maybe Cranbeek, my dad and mom would come and watch. It was just too expensive for them to come and watch. It's not that they weren't interested. It was just like really just too expensive. But yeah, a couple of parents mentored me along the way, a couple of teachers. I didn't feel threatened by the fact that I was really naughty at school, who, who just embraced my naughtiness and, and just guided me in the right direction. And for them, I'm, I'm massively grateful. The most important thing for me is, is I always wanted to prove my worth on the field, and then I had a voice. You know, you actually deserve that voice after a certain time. You know, when, when you've got the respect of the people around you. So it's massively important, I think, to just prove yourself on the field. Most of the teams that I played in that we were very successful. I had lots of other strong leaders around me. And you, could, you can never say I won a Curry Cup, but you know, I won it as a captain because I was the only leader there. there was, I had massive leadership around me. Yeah, Bobby Skinstead and I have, a, have a, like a long history because every, every single journalist tried to play us off against each other. And I've got to give the credit to Bobby. He, he came to me one day and he said, you know, we don't play the same game and and we're both captains and we can play in the same team and from then on it was like a pact you know let's we have different skills on the field and our different leadership skills as well and and let's harness both of them and let's play together in the team and that can only be good for the team competition within a team is not a bad thing if if that competition is detrimental to the team then you need to try and split the two but open communication, a leader, a, a leader above those two very strong leaders, our coach at the time, Alan Solomons, mm -hmm. didn't take nonsense from anybody. Mm -hmm. If the leadership at the top feels threatened, they'll get rid of one. Yeah. And that's, it, that's no different in business. I, I, yeah. It's very exactly much. that. Look, it all comes down to how much do you want it, you know? And, and I wanted it badly. And, and if you want it too badly, you'll sacrifice certain morals and that's probably one of the leadership lessons I learned in this very long period of time is that you must want something and you must really want it and you're prepared to work hard for it but not you don't you mustn't want it that much that you're prepared to sacrifice your morals your religion if, if you start going there you want it too much and that could cause other tr problems for you and it's all about perspective when you when you really understand the important things in life actually your leadership can be a little bit better you know, and I, I was, I was, rugby was my life. I had no back door, I didn't study anything, I had nothing. I had rugby and I had to make it work. And therefore, the, the, I, you know, I had a lot at stake. So I think if I, if I'd study something, and you know, this was for young people now, it's like study something, get something behind your name. When you finish rugby, you know you've got, a, you've got something to move to. Then you play with a little bit of a freedom. No doubt changes. Change is massive, and change is happening every day. Yeah. It's, it's, and especially now, you know, with all these movements happening and on social media, sometimes you, 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 know, you don't even know something's happening 
and there's a massive social media campaign already on the go. You know, so and you can't stop it. It's trial by social media. So you've got to be, as a leader, you've got to be on top of what's going on. You've got to be able to, no matter how old or young you are, you've got to be onto the social network so you understand what's going on and you understand what goes through those people's minds. You understand the different way and understand different people within your team.